here we are at our beautiful big Glen mango tree. Now this is a mature and a productive tree and Katie and I have come here to collect the sign woods that we're going to graft onto some bow and rootstocks. Now we choose a part of the tree that has big fat vegetative buds that haven't pushed so that that means that they're still holding their leaves in the bud is what we're looking for so that once you graft that onto your rootstock all the vigour that's held in that bud is then released through the sap and is pushed, it pushes open and your, your new grafted plant takes off. So it's important to select your, your sign wood, as it's called, at the correct time. So we've looked around the tree and we've found a beautiful, beautiful bud here to have a look at. So Katie's going to cut it off and give us a look at how she actually prepares these buds. This is the sign wood, as it's called. So the leaves are removed from, from the plant um, and it's... It's prepared to be put onto the, the rootstock. We're going to put it onto a, a bow and mango, which has a vigorous root system. And then that's going to push off to make a beautiful Glen mango. So this is what it looks like when it's ready. And you can see those beautiful big fat buds that are ready to make your new tree. We're frequently asked about grafting plants here at Daly's Nursery. Why we graft them and what are the advantages? Now there's a lot of advantages to having a grafted plant. Um, we graft them firstly because the the graft becomes a miniature version of the parent tree. So it'll grow true to, true to type, which means it'll be as vigorous and productive and the fruit will be of the same quality as the tree that the piece of sign wood came from. Whereas a seedling tree, it won't necessarily be like that. So you might have to wait 12 years for your fruit tea to fruit and then you might be really disappointed with the quality of the fruits. Grafted trees, as a rule, will start fruiting and be productive in their third or fourth year, depending on what sort of tree they are. Obviously, your fruit tree needs to be big enough to hold the weight of the fruit. So with a jackfruit, which is an extremely large fruit, it could be a little bit longer. Um, these are mangoes that we've got here today, and Katie's going to give us a demonstration on how to graft a mango. They're a, what she's going to do is a um, cleft graft. Um, so we've collected the sign wood. She then cuts it into a wedge shape. So the idea is to match up the cambium layers of the wood with the rootstock and the graft. So this section of the plant becomes the roots of the tree and the top section of the graft wood which Katie's putting on will become the mature fruiting part of the tree. This, this will be the same as what the tree that it's come from. So it should have a really highly productive and delicious quality of fruit that comes from that. Now Katie's taping them together here. This needs to be done straight away and that holds the unions together and they heal very, very quickly. So within a few weeks you'll be able to tell whether that graft is taken and it'll be on its way, it'll start pushing new growth and it actually becomes one tree in a matter of months. Once the graft is put on, the tree then needs to be labelled with exactly what it is. This is very important so we know what variety of mango that we've put onto this tree and the date of when it was grafted. So this is a process in the nursery to let us know exactly what we've produced. This mango tree was grafted at the end of January this year, so it's approximately five months old now. As you can see, the grafting tape has become loose and just I can gently break that away and it actually reveals a beautiful graft. This is all joined together where the union has been made. This tree is almost ready for sale. It just needs to go outside for a few weeks and harden up and then that'll be ready to plant in your garden. And within a couple of years, you'll be harvesting beautiful Florigan mangoes from this tree.